Let's go through the process of registering a toll-free number and verifying the whole A2P thing. This is July 24, 25th, 2025, after High Level has already rolled out the ID verification process, an additional step that is exclusive to High Level, um, which makes things kind of a pain in the behind, but uh, it is what it is. Before we get started with the number, we have to set a foundational stuff done uh, up front. So foundational stuff is I'm in a sub account right now. Before you do anything, if you purchase a number, uh, you have to have a form or a place where the um, verification happens. And so in order to do that, I've set up a, a funnel that has an opt-in form, uh, private policy terms of service, along uh, with all the verbiage that I require in order for me to take a screenshot of that and send it to the verifier. Here's what the funnel looks like. I'm gonna click it in here and I'm gonna show you guys. Basically, we have an appointment request form, a private policy um, that has the verbiage that we need, along with a terms of service page that is exclusively uh, designed with verbiage. Uh, not too much, but uh, enough for what you need for text messages. So if I click on this appointment request form, I'm gonna show you what this looks like. Um, basically, it looks like this. And right now there's no logo on top, but usually there's a logo of the company that is going to be using this, right? So if this is Mike's Tree Service, then guess what? Mike's Tree Service logo will be in here. Uh, one of the things I want to point out with this process is that the phone number should not be required in here. Um, uh, and every other field can be required. So we have this verbiage in here. Uh, that is basically for compliance purposes and right where it says enter your company name it's going to be your company name so if this says i uh, submitted this form and you agree to get text messages from mike's tree service you need to put that right in here and these messages include um product related project related updates appointment reminders and important uh, information regarding the project please note that uh, we are a lead generation agency and so the whole goal with a2p for us is to be able to get approved that should be with you so you notice that there's no verbiage in here that includes promotional items you're not going to get text messages about you know discounts or anything like that because that requires an additional marketing box that goes below this message that we simply don't don't add now could you send promotional items later if you get approved through this number? Yes, you can. We've done it. No issues at all. But I'm not going to tell you how to run your business one way or another. This is what we do because our sole purpose with this process is to get verified. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay? So we have this here. And once we have this in here, what we want to do is we want to take a screenshot of this, including the URL that it goes to. And a little tip on the URL, I set up a, a custom domain and I have subdomains for each one of my clients. So it would be something like, let's say, you know, approvals.com or something like that. And if I was doing Mike's Tree service, Mike's Tree would be Mike's Tree dot approvals.com and that would be the URL that you know people request information from there's a lot of other companies that do it this way uh, and so we kind of looked at that process and figured this would be the best thing so next thing is I take a screenshot of this entire page and I save it into a Google Drive and I make sure that I generate a shareable link that does not require user access to the drive so uh, once you do that then we can come back over here and we're ready to purchase the number. This is the foundation of everything. Uh, we're going to have this, whether we have a separate website or not. Um, I'm basically telling the reviewers this is the page that people are going to go to request information from. Now, in addition to this, yes, you need to have a private policy on your website. You need to have a terms of service on your website. Uh, you also need to make sure that it's a good idea that this exact same verbiage exists on other forms on pretty much every form that you're capturing phone numbers from on your website in case the reviewers go there and take a look as well. But now that we've got this out of the way, let's go on to the next step. Now that we got the foundation out of the way, we are going to go ahead and purchase our number and walk you through the registration process. Uh, again, I want to reiterate that this is going to be for a phone number that is managed through the lead connector system of high level. This is not through Twilio or any other service provider. And that's important because there is a step that as of July 25th, 2025, high level has put in place only specifically for high level. And that, that is this ID verification process that is a real pain in the behind. 
um, for a lot of agencies. Basically, what they want you to do is they want you to upload your driver's license and then they want you to enable your webcam to take a biometric headshot of you and match that so that you are who you say you are. I think their whole purpose of this is to basically prevent somebody from registering on behalf of another business and to blast text messages, which in reality, it seems like a pretty, you know, pretty cool thing to try to prevent spam but like anything else that's sort of like the sign at the bank that says no guns allowed you know law-abiding citizens typically aren't the problem the problem is the criminals and i don't think that the you know robbers care about whether there's a sign on the door or not uh anyhow we're going to try to get through this as best as we possibly can with all the foundational stuff done we are going to go to settings on the bottom left hand corner then once you click on settings you're going to click on phone numbers and that's going to bring you to this area where you can purchase your phone numbers now i've already got a phone number in here uh it's fine it's not registered um i'm going to walk you through what this process looks like in here in fact the phone number that i have i rejected this number on purpose just so that i can come back and do this over for you guys again so the very first thing to add a phone number is click on add number and then you can click on add phone number from the drop down menu now because this is a toll free number what i do is click on filters and then i uncheck local numbers and just apply the filters and that's going to give me a list of all the local numbers that are available and there's really no 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 um no pattern here or no no process i just pick one that i feel like stands out to me one that i may be able to say i can memorize that one uh choose it buy it for two bucks uh and then when you do that it's going to end up in this area here now right here where it says rejected on my end there's going to be there instead of rejected there's going to be a triangle that says verification Okay, and you're gonna click on this verification button in order to verify that number. You're gonna get a one out of three business contact information box. This is the first of three of the steps that we are gonna to have to do to provide information for the verifiers. Now, this entire process is built on simplicity. The only thing that we're gonna to wanna to try to do here is get this number verified, okay? Think of this process as a DMV. The people on the opposite end are a bunch of government employees that are underpaid and overworked. They are going through thousands and thousands and thousands of these numbers and verification you know, things every single day. And it's kind of like the line at the DMV. Some people are uh, going to show up with the wrong paperwork and they're going to hold up the line and get sent back home. Others are going to show up with incomplete stuff and they're gonna send back home. Depending on who you get at the counter, they may or may not give you a pencil or a pen to fill out whatever's missing, or you may end up with somebody on a bad day and they may send you home and you're gonna to have to go through the process again. Our job is to make their job easy so that we can get the stamp of approval. Provide no more than what they need, no less. We just wanna get verified. That's the whole premises of this, okay? So in step number one, all you're going to do is fill out the legal entity name. This is the name of your business that must be listed on your EIN paperwork or the government website, along with your website here, along with your first and last name or your client's first and last name, email uh, and phone number. Click continue and you're going to get to step two where they're going to ask for the address of the business that is again on that EIN form or on the business website. Once you fill this in, click continue and you're going to get to step number three this is where the compliance stuff happens you're going to give them information that is going to help them make their decision easier number one uh because i am primarily doing lead generation that's exactly what i'm doing and that's what i recommend that you guys pick even if later on you decide that hey i'm going to also be able to send some marketing messages and maybe some promotional messages here and there it doesn't mean that it's going to fail um, it just means that we want to get approved and to me this has been the easiest path of approval it's been a 10 out of 10 every single time so uh, estimated monthly volume I'm gonna click 1000 you can pick from here um, use case categories I'm always picking customer care uh, opt-in type I always choose web form and in the opt-in URL what they're looking for is a screenshot of the opt-in form or the opt-in page of where people are going to give you explicit consent in the previous step when we first started this video we built all that out in the funnel that you got here so go to that page take a screenshot of it upload that screenshot to google drive and then share that and make sure that it's publicly accessible 
before you paste it in here, I want you to grab that link, go to the incognito window, and paste that URL to make sure that you can get to it without being signed into Google. If you can get to it, then you're golden. In many cases, I like to add this arrow. I like to, you know, you know, point out where the where the stuff is, and we're good to go. Um, in the use case scenario and in the message content, we're going to give them what they need, not more, not anything less. So basically, uh, in the use case description, I don't want to include phone numbers. I don't want to include clickable links in here. I'm basically going to tell them, hey, this number is being used for appointment information, confirmation, and reminder messages to customers once they have booked an appointment with us on our website and opted in to receive SMS notifications from and you must include that business name, Science Digital LLC. So if the customer that you're helping is John Street Service and Stump Grinding LLC, then that's what you're gonna put in there, okay? And there's gonna be a document linked that it's got the verbiage that I use pretty much on all accounts. The next one is gonna be the message content, and we're gonna provide examples. Now, it doesn't mean that this is set in stone, but these are examples that are gonna help you get approved. Okay, John, this is Armando with Science Digital LLC. Thank you for requesting an appointment via our website. Uh, we'll reach out shortly to confirm a time, reply, stop to unsubscribe. That must be right there um, as well. So no links, uh, no additional phone numbers, no click here, no call us here, no nothing like that. That's, that's what I do. The next thing that you're gonna do is click on agree to terms and you're gonna send this information for verification. Now, before July 25th, this would go no problem you know uh you would hear within two to three business days and everything would get approved now uh high level has added this portion over here which is a royal pain in the butt again this is an exclusive high level thing do i think that it prevents fraud i don't think it does honestly i do not think it does um i think that law-abiding citizens and regular businesses um have no issue going through this but i think the spammers and everything are gonna find a way to spoof this and do all that stuff and it's not gonna be any difference. It just makes it difficult for us. Again, to me, this is like the sign on the bank that says no guns allowed. It really doesn't apply to everyday citizens, um, but who, who am I to, to, to say otherwise? We gotta go through this process. So, okay, the very first thing you're gonna do is click on begin verification, okay? It's important to note that for every sub account, this must be done. But if you're a business owner within a sub account, like if I do this once right now, I can come back and buy five, six, seven, eight, ten 10 different numbers and I won't have to go through this process again. I will only have to go through it one time. So basically, um, you're gonna click on begin verifying and it's gonna take you to the next step. You're gonna choose your country, in my case, the United States. I'm gonna click next. Here is where we are gonna be uploading the government ID. So basically, we are, you're gonna have to pick which one of these is gonna be the document that's gonna be used in order to verify your identity. So in most cases, it's gonna be driver's license, that's the easiest one, and that brings us here at a pivotal point. And we're here where you can click this camera option and your webcam will activate. You're gonna to have to physically take your driver's license and try to align it to your webcam and a lot of times it's gonna fail. It's gonna be a pain in the behind if you're doing this for yourself. So either way, what I recommend is clicking continue on another device. If you are verifying this for yourself, you're the business owner, now it's the time that you wanna take out your phone, grab your phone, scan the QR code, and then go to the website that is going to ask you for the verification information where you'll be able to scan your stuff. If you're doing this for your client, go ahead and click send email and what it's gonna do, it's gonna send this kind of QR code thing to them. They're gonna to have to click it and go through the process themselves usually on their, on their own device. So if I click on my phone, I have um, you know, the, the, the screen open that typically showed on you know, in the previous step. And I'm just gonna click on picture, I'm gonna allow. And the reason I do this on my phone and not from the webcam is because you're gonna be here forever doing this, trying to align it, and it's never going to align properly, and it's gonna say it can't read it, and you're gonna get frustrated. So it's the easiest thing to do is to do it from your phone, set it down on a table, scan your card, and then upload the photo to the, um, to the site. So it's gonna go through processing your ID, uh, it's gonna scan everything, and then when it reads that, 
um, there's going to be a message that says that um, you're going to move on to the next step. Okay, so let's make sure that it's you again. This is the next the next step right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but basically what it does is it wants you to activate your camera and it wants you to go, you know, this like this with your phone, um, so that you can you can kind of see what's going on. And there's a little circle that goes around in, in, in a circle, kind of like when you first set up your Apple iWatch and wants you to do all that. Uh, scanning and scanning and it verifies your picture with your driver's license, I guess with your ID. And then boom, it shows on the screen that you have been verified. Congratulations, you are done. And now you can go through the information to submit for A2P. So when I click on send for verification, now this is gonna go through high level it's going to go through verification you know in progress um, and you are going to hear within one to two three business days whether this thing is approved or not now like I mentioned earlier okay the process for verifying a local number is a little bit different because the questions that you're asked the example messages contain a few more details and I'll probably do another video on that but I wanted to to show you guys what it looks like with the ID verification process of it, um, now that this is a new process. Now, it's an extra step, yes. Is it a pain in the butt? Yes, it can be, especially for guys like me where my business model is not SaaS. I do not sell high level as a as a product that people sign up and I, I tell them it's something that it's not. My model is generating Facebook ads, helping people, local contractors, service businesses with meta ads, they automatically get a high level account i usually have my team set all this up now this adds an extra layer of complex complexity to it where i have to tell my clients that they're going to get this email and they're going to have to go through this process and upload their ids and do all that stuff but is it really complicated not not really um it's just you know it's a nuisance it's what it is so hopefully this video helped you guys hopefully this was um a little bit more clear uh, for y'all and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to them when I can